in the 1950s, it first became sort of clear that rockets were actually sufficiently advanced that we were maybe going to get to space. People started to worry, what will happen when alien biospheres collide? Planetary quarantine became the planetary protection, which became uh, international law, and it encompasses two different strands. So one is forward contamination, that's bringing Earth life to extraterrestrial environments. A couple of reasons for this. One, uh, Earth life might wipe out alien life, and also it might just make it really hard to know if we found alien life for bringing life with us. There's also back contamination, and that is when we are bringing samples or people back from extraterrestrial environments. Now, this became an issue during the Apollo missions, and so it involved, the CDC sort of officially said, hey, you're not bringing the astronauts back unless they go into quarantine. And NASA said, oh, well, we didn't think there was life on the moon, so we weren't planning that and had to scramble. So they retrofitted an Airstream trailer, put the uh, astronauts and the lunar samples in it, brought them back to Houston where they had constructed the lunar receiving lab, essentially a quarantine facility, and then they declared a federal quarantine there to prevent the risk of contaminating Earth with extraterrestrial life, which is the only time there's been a quarantine against extraterrestrial life in the federal register. And then, you know, eventually realized there was no need for that. There was no life on the moon. But what's interesting about this is if quarantine is about uncertainty, then planetary quarantine is sort of a fractal example of uncertainty. We have no idea if there is life elsewhere in the universe, and if so, if it poses a danger to Earth life. We have no idea if Earth life would pose a danger to it, or even if Earth life would be capable of replicating in extraterrestrial environments. <laughs>